Exactly. Sorry, I, for, I um, forgot to turn the recording on, so I'm just turning it on. This is the Fellowship of the Link call for Wednesday, January 17th, 2024. Go ahead, Chris. Before we go too far with the trope of barbarians at the gate, you've got to remember by the time Rome fell, the barbarians were Rome. They had integrated so much at, at the edges and into the center. It was the center that collapsed and lost their way. And then the floodgates kind of opened and then everything collapsed. So don't blame the barbarians necessarily because it's it's the fish that stinks from the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is what happened in this case. They brought in a new, new people. They brought in Julius Caesar who turned it from the thing it was into the thing it shouldn't have been. And that's what killed it. Very interesting. Another small uh, note is that the word barbarian is kind of marketing for those awful people outside. And a lot of the barbarians were actually smarter cultures that, you know, Romans or whoever didn't want any of their, their people to mingle with. So they were the barbaroi. Mm -hmm. Actually, barbaroi is probably a Greek word, I think, and it goes yes. back further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there... it mimics the sound they thought they were making. It's like, oh, ba 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 ba. You know, we still do exactly. it today. We that we still have that trope. Um, similarly, with um, the Catholic Church, most people don't realize the word pagan comes from the word Pagani, which means of the countryside. So the people out there are the pagans, and we in the center are the thing. Right, like the rustic, when people are called rustic, and that comes from rules, which is countryside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah a lot of like, well, here, uh, I, I guess we, you can go into the reading of like city versus country, or like just versus, of course, being also already confrontational. So, so perhaps just as two units in a, in a system, but through history, yeah. Uh, but yeah, in this case, it does believe to me, I'm uh, sorry, it does seem to me like uh, there is some um, some reason to call this a takeover um, uh, because of the, the, the takeover by market forces, maybe not so, so very well mediated anymore. And, you know, it's sort of like a, a bit like you have, you know, a, the the goal of a company for the goal itself or and that yielding a lot of value in the market. So eventually and then a, a transition to the market value by itself for itself. So it does feel like a, a like a corporate identities take over companies and then they do something like fracking. I mean, to use a metaphor, I guess. Uh, you know, like this, uh, they just um, also rip, it, rip the companies apart for parts, essentially. Uh, and um, and yes, uh, but, but I agree that by the time that happens, that that happened because of like previous decay, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know what you think about Moloch. Uh, as well as a metaphor for this. Um, I I hear Morlock brought up often, but I don't uh, don't never remember the context well enough to actually comment on it. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, I, yeah, I've actually been reading a little bit of um, H. G. Wells lately, but it was the <laughs> um, his time travel piece. It was the Eloy and the Morlocks, and the Morlocks. Yep. That's it. That's what it's from. Lived, lived underground in eight. It's the time machine, 1895. Although speaking it, of books, uh, wasn't our topic for the day uh, Neo books? Oh, it could be. Not to, not to, you know. Cool. Hijacked the shift here, but. Oh, I'd be happy, happy to talk about Neo books. Yeah. So, uh, which ones do you have in mind? We started discussing that last time, and I think it was, uh, it was nice. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I'm happy to talk about mine. Uh, I could talk about other projects that are there. Uh, anyone who's interested, like, you know, go from there. But, um, uh, oh, I don't know, the Barbary Coast. Interesting. So distractible. It's not, sorry, the Barbary Coast is the Berbers. So the Barbary pirates were Berber Arabs. 
uh, who are, uh, I think, a particularly conservative uh, piece of Arab culture, of Muslim, of the Muslim world. Um, so, so I'm reviewing here a, a neo books to see what they, we discussed previously. Um, in, in case we want to take up uh, any threads, we have design from, from trust. Um, we have, well, here a notion of the great conversation, which I'm not sure we, whether we framed it as a neo book, but I sort of like the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we discussed transclusion uh, as a way to write this. Um, and yeah, the great ideas again in a different uh, meeting came up. Um, I hear Chris, you share um, that thread. Yeah. So then uh, we have open letters, which is like uh, when I'm trying to pursue. Yep. Cool. So why don't I just uh, start in the middle uh, mm -hmm. in Medias Res uh, and um, we can find our way to the things we want to talk about. Uh, so, and I think I'll probably repeat some stuff that I, we started with at the end of last call, uh, but that's actually a reasonable overlap. So neobooks are an attempt to use books as shiny bait um, to attract people to the idea that the content of books should be in composable, reusable nuggets of, uh, that, are, that, in, in, that, have, that contain wisdom, insight, whatever, ideas that, um, are alive, meaning they, uh, as a wiki document, as a community document that might be improved over time, so might these. And the book would be a slice through a series of nuggets that roll up, but but the book would would specify like it's published on a particular date, so it takes a, a version of of each nugget on that date, rolls them up, spits them out as an ebook or Kindle uh, file format book, which means it's then fixed as a snapshot of that moment, which is a, a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, but all these things, whether it's uh, you know uh, great conversations, you know great books of the Western world, or history, or the etymology of barbarian or uh, pagan, uh, all these things could easily be nuggets and then be reused in different ways. Uh, Writing a neo book presupposes a kind of uh, a form of rhetoric that I'm still trying to figure out how to explain properly. It borrows a tremendous amount from writing wikily or writing as if you were writing on a wiki because a big inspiration for neo books is how wikis work because wikis maintain wikis are social documents. They maintain version control, so you can always roll back and roll forward. And that's one way to prevent vandalism or other kinds of obstruction, et cetera, et cetera. But wikis aren't usually trying to write for composability, meaning uh, one of my problems with Wikipedia is that, uh, or with the peer-to-peer -peer foundations wiki, is that the pages are just really, really long. Uh, they, they, they wind up being a long read in, individually because they're trying to sort of encompass the whole subject. But it turns out that a lot of the things that they contain are subunitable, nugget, nuggetizable. That nuggetization is a, is a word I'm, I'm working with. Like, what, what does it mean to think in terms of, a, of a, what is the most functional nugget size? Where, what are the boundaries of nuggets? How do nuggets link to each other and, and sort of flow together so that they still read continuously? Those are all really important questions as, as I'm sort of trying to compose neobooks. And then the neobook that I'm working on is um, about design from trust, which is this idea I had back in, I don't know, 2012-ish. And uh, I'm busy writing kind of an outline uh, in Obsidian on uh, GitHub, which is the, the, the massive wiki architecture that I've been using because Pete Kaminsky, uh, who will probably join us in a sec, but he said he'd be late. Um, oh, Berbers are also barbarians? Michael, interesting. Um, and so, uh, So I'm uh, composing a neo book about design from trust, which means I'm writing a bunch of nuggets up about uh, uh, about this concept of design from trust, which is really fun to do. Uh, I'm also trying to point to all the different places where uh, I have already recorded videos or done talks or whatever else, because they fold in as meta material for all these things. 
in addition. So let me pause there for a second uh, and see which part of this y'all are interested in and uh, where to go. And I, I'm, I'm kind of bummed that we're not in Zoom because in Zoom, I find screen sharing incredibly easy and I do it all the time. I'm a little daunted by Jitsi screen sharing, so I'm going to hold off for a second. But I've got I've got Docs we jump. and stuff like that. Pardon? I think we, we could jump as well to try it because uh, so we uh, have the we will have the, the ocean for the recording. Um, yes, well, if you, if you add the meat thing, let's just, let's just talk but, for a bit for a bit now. Yeah. So um, yes, I, so I will be interested in like seeing how which nuggets you have so far. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm interested in the idea of connectivity, and I wonder if you have experimented with things like prompts to ChatGPT or Mistral saying. Uh, these are three nuggets, please link them. I, I will place a number of fragments, please uh, uh, incorporate them into a cohesive whole. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to avoid ChatGPT at the second at the moment, partly because I think this is the right window. Let me share here. Yeah, good. So are you guys now seeing? Yeah, perfect. Good. Okay. So what are tools for thinking? Is that what you're seeing? Yes. OK. Yep. So if I click on this tab, are you now seeing a tab that's basically the introduction to DFT? Yes. OK, good. Uh, so DFT, and only part, yeah. and only that. Good, because I shared just this app. Yeah. Um, and this, uh, so actually, this book has a table of contents. Here's the table of contents. This, this is kind of what I mean by the Neo book. Uh, and my hope is that every Neo book has a landing page and then a table of contents page that looks a little bit like this. And I think that once we start to actually publish uh, Neobooks, we'll change this. This will change dramatically. But this is just version one. But here's uh, here's a wiki page called DFT Cover Art. Here's uh, you know working title. Here's Front Matter, for example. So if I click on this, <coughs> uh, this is actually a cut and paste from uh, some resource on the web. I've forgotten exactly where of what should be in Front Matter. And all these sections are sort of optional. Almost all of them are optional, Not not all of them. Uh, you need a title for a book. You probably need a copyright of some sort, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't have to have a dedication, for example. Uh, so these are so these will be replaced as I write them with probably uh, wiki links that point to a paragraph or six that do each of these things that then roll up into the front matter section. So if I go back to the contents, that's what would happen to the to the front matter here. And then uh, I, there's two introductions to this book. One of them is the Neo Books introduction, and the other one is the DFT introduction. Because, as I say in the paragraph here, this is a new kind of book, a neo book. So first, I need to explain the neo book thing, and then I need to explain design firm trust. So I'm kind of handicapping myself by making this a doubly complicated book to write. But I like this. I'm really excited by it. And if I click on the neo books intro, this is the page that sort of says the most uh, about this. And then it includes. Uh, this is a tiny technical thing. But the Neobooks intro includes a, a transclusion of another page called Nuggets Are Really Powerful. And in Obsidian, this works really well. But uh, when it publishes out to the web through the a massive wiki website builder, there's no function yet to include a transcluded page. That's some code that has to still happen. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to, how to get there. So do you have, oh, sorry, I'm missing the myself. Go ahead. Do you have a link to this page in the repo? I do. Uh, let me uh, ba -da -ba -da, share that in the chat. This is the thing. I, I'm, gonna, I'm now over in my brain, but you can't see me. And I now need to find the chat while screen sharing, which I have no idea how to find. Oh, I think I, I think I see it over here. Good. Let me try this. Yeah, that, that does it. Hey, Aram. Hi, Bentley. Uh, we're, we're diving into Neo books. So picking up where we left off uh, at the end of last call. Um, I was wondering, so real quick. Yeah. That you have a lot of potential chapters for the Neo book, but the actual books like built state is determined by the table of contents. So uh, an uh, 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 sort of irrelevant. A plugin or extension I would love to have is one that I can point to this page and then say, show me all the objects that are supposed to roll up into this book and then show me this, the, the status of each of them, right? So one of the nice things of Scrivener, which is the, the kind of the, the most used writer's app, which I don't like at all for reasons I think I've mentioned here before. So 
I was writing a bunch of different manuscripts in Scrivener and then I one day realized that you cannot copy paste a chapter from, or a segment from one manuscript into another manuscript. They are completely separate objects and copy paste does not work. And I'm like, that's dumb. Because for me, a book is, a, is an outline written around nuggets that exist out in the wild. And it's just a playlist, like a table of contents that rolls up. That's a book for me now in my head. Uh, and this is just my conceit for how that works. So like this becomes sort of your book's playlist. Your table of contents is your book's playlist. So the book contents page for DFT is the playlist for DFT. And I still haven't figured out with Pete, how do I indicate on a page when there's a link that's just meant to be a link embedded in text, not to be rolled up into the book? And how do, how do we differentiate the links that are meant to be rolled up into the book? Because some of these things actually like are uh, recursive. There, there will be, a, you know, there, there will be a, a wiki page listed in the table of contents that has a couple embedded wiki pages, which are meant to roll into the full flowed text of the book. And those are technical details about metadata that we will hopefully iron out. Uh, but yes, the, the, this page is meant to be the, the, the role of sequence. And, and in fact, it should be in linear sequence of what will turn into a book. And if I've, forgot, right. you know, if I've forgotten sections or whatever else, let me know. But you know, th this is an amateur version of this. Keep going. And what do you, how do you, did, you said it should show the status. I assume like finished or not. Right. What, uh, what indicates status on those individual pages right now? So right this minute, absolutely nothing. Um, one hack, one, one slow hack would be to rename the pages with a number in parentheses at the end of the name. And because Obsidian is pretty good about um, mirroring names and making sure that the links still work and all that kind of stuff across pages that refer, that would be kind of interesting. However, <clears throat> at the far end, when it gets published out to the web, I don't want random numbers at the end of page names uh, because that's going to screw up anything I do in my brain because I have to do this long runaround to actually put pages in my brain because as I'm busy writing these nuggets, I'm trying to mirror them in my brain. And then, yeah. when, and then wherever I have a nugget, at the, in the metadata for that nugget, another thing we haven't figured out yet, there will be a link back to my brain for that particular nugget, right? Yeah. Also, I mean, if you want to work on this in the open, right, URLs derive from the file names. So then you'd end up with non-maintainable non URLs. I mean, have you explored like the using the YAML metadata block for storing that sort of thing? A little bit, yes, but I haven't gotten fluent in YAML and I don't know exactly what where, and I don't really want front matter, uh, YAML front matter that then makes it really hard to start writing the book. And that's sort of what I've seen is that YAML winds up being at the top of the file and I don't, there might be an Obsidian plugin that lets you show and hide YAML, which would be terrific, but I haven't tried to look for it even. Can because, does that all make screen? sense? Oh, sure. Yeah, let, me, yeah. let me stop sharing mine. Let me just sort of show you real quick. Let me stop sharing mine. While he's pulling that up, you could, um, in YAML, it's in the wiki gardening space, a lot of people will use a little seed emoji and then a little plant emoji and then a big tree emoji to indicate the status. Hmm. But you could put that in as YAML front matter and then transclude that into your table of contents to give an indicator at least internally for you, where things stand. Cool. Yeah, like that that's an interesting idea. I've seen that before, but I didn't realize it was a convention. Um, it's a loose, you know, I've seen it uh, on the websites that. Yeah, so like the latest version of Obsidian should give you your YAML as fields like this. Oh. Um, and one of the really nice things you can do here is like you could add so for example when we're dealing with stuff that we talk about with a, a, that's on Flancy and Zagora I just create no. a custom meta field to link no. to it. That's awesome. Uh, Some people like, do that in the Agora. They use this YAML or org mode and they point to the um, to the Agora uh, link. And there are conventions where uh, I think I should have a couple of things that m are marked like this. Uh, oh no, I didn't want to create it, but let, let's just take this as an example, right? So one of the cool things that you can do to help like reduce the work yeah. is Obsidian has templates. So I can go to my note template and it'll auto create the fields that I have in that template and auto fill them with certain information. Are the templates right? native or are they a, uh, an extension? I believe they're native. Okay. Uh, 
So then I can like move this file to. And Pete has joined us. I didn't realize, but he's there now. Cool. Oh. Right. So the nice thing about that, right, is then on additionally, you can have. So I have a field called is based on, right, which indicates the original location of something. Yep. So you might have a custom field for your brain, or you might use is based on, which has to do with like SEO and schema.org. Uh, and, and the other thing that's sort of useful for this is um, you could do searches based on these fields. You can do tagging in these fields, right. um, though I prefer the... There's a convention amongst Obsidian people where they do tags like this, and that does work. Um, huh. And that can make it a lot easier. And mm -hmm. just to like show you, the templates folder is here, and it's just it is very basic, right? So that might help. Um, I do that a lot, and I also have like a convention for when I'm linking to another thing that I want to include in a site, yeah, I usually just have that link as its own file. And then I can link to that file in some mm. other context. I also want to have, I'm. Uh, we've been talking a little bit here about pose and posse and all those things about where do you publish first and how do you cross posts and all that complicated stuff. So um, many nuggets that I'm going to write about that I'm going to include in the book might actually be pu published as articles on Medium or articles on the Substack that we've built. Uh, like the Neo books, books, like the Neo mm -hmm. books intro is meant to be the first Substack post or one of the first Substack posts. I just haven't figured, finished it or figured that out. Could, uh, could I show uh, share my screen for a bit to see uh, how this looks? Yes, and Aram, um, mm -hmm. how do I learn everything you just showed? I'm I'm like all over it. <laughs> I think that's all just stuff built into Obsidian. So if you do like Obsidian templates and uh, Obsidian, he he kind of asked a different question. How do I learn it instead of um, <laughs> yeah. if I know about well, it? How well, the answer I is RTFM, right? <laughs> I I don't. That's um, I'm, I mean that, I'm teasing. That's an acceptable. That's an acceptable uh, answer for some people, and for some people, no. Yeah. So I, I, another thing, I, some of that you can learn from YouTube videos, um, uh, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, Aram, you should have a, a YouTube series. Yeah, or totally. A or <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, so that could be a good uh, topic. I guess this is uh, this applies to everything. This is, you can always go meta, but you know how we build, um, how we write the uh, the neo book using Obsidian or whichever tools we choose. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems like a very good topic for the first or second new book. But I don't know, uh, Jerry, if you see that as being designed from trust in the brief preface, maybe, or uh, then maybe that's a separate thing we could um, be uh, modeling as a project. So the preface, there. so the, the first intro, the new books intro, is meant to be brief enough to describe what the hell this is and not so long that it distracts people from actually reading a book about design from trust. But, right. but um, because it's a neo book, it's meant to draw people into the wiki where all of the rest of that could live as connected links and basically a, a nice mycelial web of, of uh, you know, go to town because, right. uh, because the part that's excerpted or that's rolled into the book needs to be the Goldilocks amount uh, of text to function to get people to go follow it and go play, you know, go play online, and and right. therefore the book designed from trust hopefully will lead people to go play in neo books and on the wiki, and then also to play in the ideas about trust, blah blah blah. Right. My rec my recommendation on book number one that you're yes. working on is don't go overboard with Obsidian plugins and all the crazy. Keep it as simple and as close to raw text so that it not only works in Obsidian, but if somebody wants to move it to 10 other platforms, all the simple text will just work. And then once you've seen how it works, you can then flavor it to your tool of choice. I love that, Chris. Kind of go from there. But that makes it much, much more portable than to like, build so much obsidian into it that it's not easily movable or copyable and redoable in some other space or that will add so much additional metadata that people get lost in the weeds of the metadata right. 
rather than the thing itself. Bingo. Yeah, now, that, that, is a minimal that, amount of a markup. Maybe. Yeah. Does that mean that YAML is safe because the way Obsidian uses and implements YAML would transport easily? Or does that mean even YAML is dangerous? No, I think YAML is like, at this point, a pretty established convention. Um, Peter noted that Massive Wiki supports it. Almost anything that lets you edit Markdown is going to support it. And almost anything that renders Markdown is going to look at it or expect that you leverage something that looks at it. Right. Uh, uh, and potentially just keep it from the view by default. Uh, like, um, it's Because as a standard, it's easy to say if you are going to have a print view, for example, like to assemble like uh, the chapters into a, a, a real sequence, you can just keep the YAML. YAML front matter is is an example of something where they where the convention as developed ended up being uh, it degrades pretty gracefully. Uh, so if you give a, a mark a markdown file with YAML front matter to a YAML parser that doesn't know anything about markdown, it can see that the first part is a document, um, and then the punctuation that gets used for delimiting the YAML front matter is standard lines in Markdown. So yeah. you can tell uh, even a, a, a naive Markdown parser will will offset or set off yeah. that, that yeah. Yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. So uh, a thing that I always thought that I wanted to do with Massive Wiki, and now I, re I realize I should do it with other people, is, is, is kind of have a Markdown compliance uh, level. Um, so you know, if Markdown zero is anybody can read it and nobody will be confused. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then something with YAML front matter is kind of like a 2 or 2.5 or something like that, where it's like nobody will break uh, if they see it. But um, some of the, you know, some uh, civilian uh, humans might be confused by that YAML front matter, but nothing will break. And then there's really fancy stuff that you can do at Obsidian that nobody else is going to ever be able to render. And that's maybe like a 5 or something like that. But it would be fun to have that kind of a, a compliance level or, or st standardization slash uh, complexity uh, levels, you know, where um, please write in Markdown 1.5 1, 1 level compliance or, you know, go ahead and use 4 because we're all using Obsidian or whatever. Yes. Uh, plus one to that, Peter, I think that's crucial. And um, I'm not aware of many uh, like this because it's, a, it's sort of like a protocol. Uh, of like you know defining these layers for the protocol. Uh, so yeah. I wrote about, of course, like I named it Iowa Protocol. My take on this, but the idea is like precisely to just be explicit about which uh, protocols we use in this sense. Uh, so one quick um, uh, just comment on the levels. Uh, the wiki link uh, um, as an, an anchor link or semantic link uh, is not in Markdown actually. So that's sort of like an extension to Markdown as well that I think we are already using because of Obsidian. But I think it's a, it's not considered core Markdown. So maybe it's also like at the level of YAML, like something that is an extension to common mark. But I'm not sure whether it should the, be uh, um, different. The, the double square brackets, I think they're actually uh, originally from uh, GitHub's uh, wiki. Um, right. So it has been pretty well. You know, it's But you're totally right. It's also, so Markdown 0 actually doesn't even have wiki links in it, right? Um, yeah. And then you know zero point five or one or one point five or something is where you can start to do wiki links. Um, uh. So let me just like uh, I I was called that a uh, markdown levels or like markdown extension levels. Here I got a protocol that is for me, but also the GitHub links. Yeah. And so I wanted to show quickly how um, what you're doing. Um, you're interested what what you're doing, um, Jerry. Looks like um, in the hour, right? please. As it is now. So this is a repo. I think you're using OGM for this. For, yes. uh, for OGM, OGM. Okay. you are in the right place. I, I noticed what right. I, I, I inferred what you were doing. Yeah. This is a, this is link agorai slash a, a user OGM. If you want to follow along. So what it does by default is just show the readme, if there's one, and then just stuff just the, with the content of the, of the repo as parsed. And here we will show what we understood from the repo, and maybe there's files that we are in here because the format is not supported, or you know we haven't parsed them right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so this is just I, I mean have a repository type massive wiki is like a 
uh, uh, fake Massive Wiki support because it just says it's Massive Wiki, but it doesn't do anything with it in particular. Uh -huh. But it's nice to, I, I, I thought it was nice just to ex give exposure on, you know, how, how, how the person writing this garden is actually doing it or using it. That's great. So here we also Massive Wiki of Syria. And you have 307 resources, and these are the latest ones the Agora has seen as edited. I don't know if it's up to date. Hopefully it is. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so here we have examples uh, of the central trust and so on. I don't know if you have any pages that have uh, this uh, YAML uh, or Obsidian uh, convention you're using about uh, you know transclusion. I have not added. Try. I have not yet added any YAML that I that I am aware of. The only thing I've done is the bang mark in front of a link, which which transcludes other pages into the current page in Obsidian. So I've done Interesting. that. Interesting. Uh, really? Do you have an example? That, Maybe. That, uh, pardon? Sorry, I, remember yeah, what, what... I think we both had the same question, which was, do you have an example of what that looks like? Yeah, because that's interesting to me. Because the only thing that I can think of a bang link doing is embedding an image. But it also and, does that for pages. Same exact method em embeds pages. Yeah, yeah. Never yeah. encountered that convention. Let before. me show you. So Let me, that uh, may be a obsidian a, unique one. Yeah, it's it's yeah. an obsidian thing, and it's an extension. It's an obvious extension, right? Embed okay. an image, embed a link, basically. Um, and I, I think it gets fairly well used in in the obsidian uh, community. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it will be easy even to implement that in the Agora because it already has transclusion and it supports obsidian images, actually, but uh, the, the same convention. But uh, so it should be, we, we could add, we could merge the two. It shouldn't be too much work, actually. Uh, so if you have an example, um, um, uh, Jerry, later as well, of like a page that already has transclusion of articles, I yeah. could see how it looks and fix it. Um, you know? Good. And Pete, is, is this therefore one of those? Obsidian only things that we should maybe avoid, or is there a more general purpose way of doing it? I, I, it's, it's such an obvious extension, and you know, theoretically, reasonably straightforward to implement. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a good extension. Cool. I would. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, it's quite a idiomatic because of how um, the consistent it is with the, with the transclusion convention. Yeah. I, I don't know if I would say the, the same thing if Obsidian hadn't already implemented it, but now that that you know one of the one of the main Markdown editors has implemented it, and and because it's a, a straightforward you know syntax extension, I, I would definitely go for it. The one thing I think may not be super consistent across things because TiddlyWiki does something like that as well. Um, but it's do you do you transclude the title or not the title or is right. the title there? Yeah. Which means yeah. the title either sh shows up twice in the transcluded thing or and not at all. And by and the way, we're dangerously close to falling into Aram's explorations into HTMX. <laughs> That's yeah, good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting, isn't it? Yes. It is interesting. I mean Right, like the idea there is you don't like the transclusion becomes page navigation, which exactly. I think is an interesting idea. Maybe it's not desirable for every case. Yeah, and Pete, before you got on the call, I, I was mentioning that you and I had talked about but not resolved. How do we mark? How does the writer, the author of a neo book, mark the difference between a link to that just should be an embedded link in flowing text versus a link that should be uh, rolled up and transcluded into the text of the book? Um, so I think that's still a, a thing to figure out. Yeah, that, so, uh, the other thing that works with that, right, is like thinking about like conventions and how to include it. Uh, Valencian, if you don't mind, I'll do a quick, uh, share here. Yeah. Right. So like to give you some context and I think that this is pretty easily adaptable though, obviously some, some programs may block crawling. But uh, let's just share screen two. Yeah, okay. Right, so like the Context Center project sort of does that where the idea is the actual like file here. And like this, this is the convention I came up with, but it doesn't need to work this way, right? The convention is a bare link, right? So you're not putting it, you're not, 
linking it to anything other than you're just putting the link into your document. Mm -hmm. um, and when it does that on build step, it creates these cards. Hmm. And right now what it'll do is if it'll attempt to submit them to the web archive and if it succeeds, it includes a link to the web archive version of that page. But if it does not succeed, it will create a copy of the page's text. No. Uh, uh, this comes with like all of the appropriate SEO to designate that like this is not the original page. The original page is somewhere else. That's where it is. That's but this way, cool. like, yeah, yeah. And it's fairly straightforward. I'm working on making it even more straightforward and making the actual crawling process a little more immune to being blocked. But yes. um, like, I really like this pattern in particular. This is a 11T, yeah. actually it's not even an 11T plugin. It's a Markdown plugin mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that you can style the output however you want. Mm -hmm. And I have an 11T plugin that then styles the output. Um, oh. Have you look at the, uh, the OMB? Maybe there's like a maybe you know one thing I was thinking of for transclusion is well if a site's okay we need to transclude it and or we can use OMB to negotiate how to do that um, then maybe it's okay to like save a copy as well like the thinking. OMB like protocol like I check to see if right. I'm allowed to OMB right right so that that would oh, be yeah. you know yeah I mean that's one way of seeking consent. But if, uh, otherwise, of course, I think we can say if, uh, if a user wants to save it, it's fine to save it. I think that's also OK. Yeah, I, my excuse is this is an archive, so I'm going to save everything. And I don't really care about what the preference is. Um, right? Like, if I'm including it there, then it's presumably, I believe it's important enough to archive. If it's important enough to archive, I think it's important enough to archive. And so the fact that you've got a robots.txt file or whatever is irrelevant to me. I'm going to negotiate yeah, around it. <laughs> I think that's fair. Like, trust the user. Yeah. I'm, having yeah. a, I'm having a dilemma, which is I was going to join a call I'd like to listen to at the top of the hour. I don't know who can hang after the top of the hour or not. It took us a while to get assembled here. And this is a hot discussion that's clearly interesting to me. So I'm not sure what we should do. If we, if there's a way to suspend animation here and resume next week, that would be cool. Uh, Let's do it. Yeah, can be I'm fine with that. Should we do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, because because yeah. then we a suspension protocol. And also, yeah, exactly. Should we put that in the YAML? Um, and then that'll also give us all a chance now that we're warming up the subject a bit more to to come back in with uh, different ideas or whatever we trip across in the in the intervening week. And, and Jerry, if you send me a link to a uh, place with a uh, place with transclusion. Hold on. Let, me, let me let me with. let me screen share right now from Obsidian. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Let me screen share my Obsidian right now because I can show you that as we squeak, as we live and breathe. So I happen to know that the NeoBooks introduction has the only one of those that I've done. Uh, so if I actually go to the page. Uh, and then I come down here, how do neobooks work? Excellent. So here you see the, the sort of thing that looks like a quotation. Here's the transclusion in action. Oh, but it looks a lot like how you handle it, Flancian, in the Agora. Like it looks so, very so, similar physically on the page. And you'll notice it's duplicating the title, which is you yeah. know, just a, a, a hiccup, but, but that's, what I, that's all I'm doing. I mean, uh, here, uh, how it could look, here's how it looks in the hour. I mean, it's just like a broken image, but I I'm looking forward to fixing that. And how it, how it will look um, will be essentially like, uh, it does hour of flans, yeah, if it works. So and, uh, one convention I use in um, uh, in some, uh, no, it's not the actual, uh, the right now, but uh, one convention I use is having an, an, an allow list of links where if it finds a link, it will just transclude it. So uh, essentially, um, uh, you know, if you say docs.google or uh, a massive wiki URL, that will essentially be transcluded just by default. Um, and it will look um, like this. I mean, it's not maybe the best. Oh, OK, I have to sign it to Google. But if not, you will see it. Hmm. Essentially, it's just like an iframe. But anyway, I, I can I can fix it and show you next week how it could uh, look uh, cheaply, essentially. 
Sounds awesome. Any other thoughts or questions right now before we roll up this call? Nope. We're good then. Yeah. Um, thank you. This was, I did I, when we started, and I was it was just me and Flancian's other machine holding holding the the Jitsi open. I was like, well, okay, I guess nothing's going to come of this call. Yeah, it was so exciting. And then, like, so many people here, I agree. It was like, uh, great, thank you. And okay, let's re recover the contact next week. Neo book, design from trust, transclusion. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. See you then. So much. So, you see some of you in, 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 in the meantime. And I'm going to turn off the recording and head over to cool. the other call. Awesome. I, I dropped to another mm -hmm. call too. Bye. See you, see you next week. Okay.